comment and maybe it wasn't my class but i will say we've been talking unpacking implicit bias and prejudice and discrimination in our ap psychology from our myers textbook and um kids had brought up questions about the convert the the voting that was going on today and i want to clarify because frontal lobes are a thing and sometimes what you hear at home is not what's actually said if you have a teenager you know what i'm talking about um and my conversation was um go this is we're here for you we're here for your education um, and if you feel strongly for Warrant 15, please go speak. Um, if you're 18, go vote. Um, if you are concerned with it, please go speak, vote. Um, and I echoed what um, Fred Hubert said earlier in that I love that we're here and listening to each other and respecting each other's viewpoints. And that's the beauty of this direct democracy that we have here. So I'm hoping that we vote down both renditions of Warrant 15 so I can continue to teach history and not a whitewashed version of history. No one is teaching kids to hate themselves or America or God. I'm hoping we vote to support DEI and trust our teachers. Thank you. Oh, gotta get the magic blue card out. John yes, Mark Ledoux, Dow Road. Um, so first of all, there's two things I want to say very briefly because I know everyone wants to get the heck out of here. Um, first of all, I think just my layman's reading of, of the text, it seems to be like a good foundation that we treat everyone equally, that there's not discrimination based on skin color. And, and amongst other things, I mean, obviously this is, I don't have it right in front of me. But if you read it, it seems relatively straightforward. And that anything that's on top of that, like you can have, you can teach history. You know, you can teach about all the egregious things that were done to people of different races, but to assign blame to an entire race because of things that people in that race did individually or as a group at that time is wrong. Because then we're never absolved from what I believe somebody talked about, original sin. Um, I want to just say, first of all, thank you for everyone being here. I, I I think it's just incredible that everybody's here this long and this matters this much to you. It matters to a lot of people, I can tell because I heard people yell things from the back while other people were talking. Um, I thank you for your emotion, but frankly, I think that what we need as a country is to draw together and to have conversations. I want you to find somebody that you disagree with and just share your heart with them. Because we are so stuck in this my, my tribe, your tribe thing, that it's, it's getting down to the point where to have this conversation, we've had to have a warrant article, all right? That's pretty messed up. And we all should be able to, to talk to somebody that we, we look at and go, all right, I don't, I don't agree with you. I think you're nuts. But we're going to sit down, we're going to have a coffee, and I want to share my heart with you. Because this is our town. It's all our town. Thank you. Mr. Garuba, I know that you are disappointed with how much time you were allotted, but by running over by almost a minute and a half, you are disrespecting the process and the voters in this room. You have two minutes, exactly two minutes. Yes, sir. Um, actually, I was. I. The, mo the, the, the motion was called in debate, and I identified five people. All right, my mistake. Honest, after you're standing here for eight hours, it's easy to get confused. I'm sure it is. My name is Jillian Hinkle. Uh, I'm on Hillside Drive, a resident of Hollis. I am the parent of two students. One was a 2019 graduate of Hollis uh, Brookline High School. The other will graduate this year. Uh, I am also the proud daughter of a Cuban immigrant uh, and the proud parent of a trans woman. In 2019, my daughter chose not to attend graduation in spite of being a very high achieving student here. There was a matter of weeks where she did not attend class, even though she had not transitioned and did not transition until after she left the high school. And it was agreed with the administration that they did not have the verbiage nor the tools to keep her safe. I am against this warrant article. I think we have a lot of discussion that needs to happen here. I trust the DEI team and 
I hope that people will vote no. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Had to take my mask off. I'm Lene Day, um, Broad Street in Hollis. And I am, I'm up here because um, I've heard the name, I've, I've heard God and faith invoked in support of this amendment a couple of times. And I felt compelled to come up because I am someone who attends a conservative evangelical church. I am also someone who tends to vote um, more liberal, and I'm opposed to this amendment. I wanted to come up here because I felt like it was really, really important to say we need so desperately to be listening to each other. And I say that to everybody. Like, I say that to my peop like fellow Christians who, those of you who are Christians who are supporting this amendment, I'm, I know that's that. I'm not putting everybody in buckets, but those of you who are and who are supporting this amendment, please listen to your community members who are expressing hurt. We are called to love and to care. Listen to your community, community members who are expressing hurt. But also, my liberal friends, I, I used to work at Oxfam America, and I love Oxfam a whole lot and the work that they do. Um, it broke my heart how much a people who have a rhetoric around human rights and caring and defending those who are on the outside, the way we talk to more conservative people and about them. So please, all, all of us, can we please listen to each other? Listen to the work that the DEI group is doing. Pay attention to like what makes, what are you afraid of? What are we all afraid of? We're all afraid of being excluded. We're all afraid of being oppressed. We're all afraid of our voices not being heard and our kids being taught to like ignore other people's voices. Like we are all afraid of the same things. Let's listen to each other and work together. Support the work of the DEI group, which has people who disagree. It's made up of two different groups who disagree. Let's support that work and get behind that work and listen to each other and learn from each other. Thank you. Mr. Garubo. It won't take too much time. I just want everybody to support the effort for um, equality, justice, and unity. And I want to pass in a request for a secret uh, vote. On what? On the amendment. Okay, we have a request for a secret vote on the amendment. I will also mention that I have a request for a secret vote on the on the article itself. Uh, when I read your name, please stand up and show me your card. Joseph Garuba, show me your card. Jonathan Garuba, Harold Cadman. Harold Cadman, thank you. Ardath Blovelt, Werner Nyball, Heather Nyball, and Lillian Garuba. All right, so we're going to have a, a secret ballot vote. It's going to be the green ballot. Boxes over there and boxes over there. The polls are open. Is Representative Homola still here? We are, we are voting on the amendment to replace the article. Is Representative Homola still here? All right. Uh, do you still wish to be recognized for Article 16? All right, thank you.
Thank you. There has been some confusion about what we're voting on. <laughs> we are voting on replacing the, um, the article as written in the warrant with the amendment that I read. If this passes or if this fails, there is then another vote on the article as, as written or article as amended. Thank you. I'll figure that out later.
Is there anybody here who still needs to vote on this or on this uh, amendment? Seeing none. Two coming. Well, hurry them up. We are running into serious time pressure here. Pay for them. So, she's got two coming, me coming to the parking lot? Or, or coming to the ballot box? If you're still waiting to vote, I need you to run. Run over there. Just so people understand, we have a serious time issue. The sun is, is getting low. Now that, that necessarily, obviously we have to stop talking by sunset, but uh, on a more serious issue, there's a great deal of sound and audio equipment that all needs to get picked up by dark. And so uh, our tech, tech crew is, is legitimately concerned that they won't have enough time to do so. Therefore, I would like to urge people for the, the remaining discussion to be brief and consider whether you actually need to speak at all. Do we have all the, all the voters that are going to vote? All right, the polls are now closed. During this break, while they count stuff, I would like to my, my add to the chorus of thanking uh, the school board and the budget committee and the administration and the uh, school staff and the town staff and so on for all the setup uh, that has been required. This, this has been a hellish 15 months for elections and meetings. We have had to review and revise almost every one of our procedures in light of difficult circumstances, trying to be safe. So um, I would like to particularly uh, give my thanks to the voters who are coming out. I know it can be quite of a pain to d dedicate what's turned into a beautiful Saturday to an eight hour uh, discussion of uh, important topics. But it is important to do the business of the district to do the business of your town. So I applaud you, the voters, for coming out. talk about what's next until we know what's next. <laughs> Can I ask him a question? Yes. Thank you. Oh. No, no. We, all we have to do is wait until they're done. Mr. Moderator? And we know the answer. Hello? It's true. It's true. Uh, are we going to wait until the count is complete before continuing? Let me just, maybe you we can. Have to, we don't know yeah, yes, because we don't know what's on the floor. It's either the article or the amendment. Ask if anybody wants to speak to either. They're, they're kind of the same. Okay. Okay. Um, our, our council raises the point. If someone wants to speak to both at the same time, in other words, I'm in favor of whichever one passes or I oppose to whichever one passes, you can do that now. But I would like to reiterate, we have time issues in order to, to, to break down all of this sound equipment. So I would do my best to urge people to not speak at all. You name it. Hey, 
I understood it. it just, you know, I'm just, if we could survive without a mic, that would. But I mean, I don't want to offend people, but like taking down the flags, I'll, you know. Go, go ahead. Take down the flag. Take down the podium. Okay. Take down that mic. Okay. Uh, do we still need four speakers? I don't know. I'll tell the sound crew that they can start taking down what you need and these yeah. two speakers. That, that mic and this yeah. mic. Right. Yeah. Oops. Get a bonus if you finish before. Let me see. Give Drew a second to come right, back. Yeah, I will. Um, if you need this, tilt this to you. I, I tilt it up. I'm going to chair the middle of the Okay. Did I miss you? Yeah. Okay. No, the chairs don't matter. It's the sound. Mr. Moderator, somebody here would like to make a comment. Uh, a comment I can accept. Well, testimony? Go right ahead. If you, is your mic live? Go ahead. Hello? Yes, it's live. My name is Meredith West. I'm at 235 Pine Hill Road. I haven't spoken at one of these before. I don't need to hear myself talk. Face but me, I, please. But I do need to speak on behalf of my son. Eight years ago, we traveled to China, Shanghai, and adopted a little boy. Y'all probably seen him around town. He has albinism, so he kind of stands out. He's very aware of what's going on in the Asian community and the violence that's happening. He asks, why? I oppose both the amendment and this article because he deserves to have these issues discussed in public, in his schools. He deserves to be able to be heard and to have opposing viewpoints heard. So he's 10, and he deserves people talking. And I don't understand why that's a problem. Thank you. Is uh, David Werner in the house? Mr. Werner? David Werner, looking for David Werner? I have something of yours that I think you want. Please come up and get it. Somebody handed it to me. God bless him, wherever it was. Thank you. Pizza on David. Pizza on David?
No one named Chad here. <laughs> Chair, the chairs will be taken care of. It's not the chairs, it's the sound stuff. So is he going to, Andy, is he going to take some of the sound stuff out? He can go ahead. Or can, well, we're, try, we're trying to, I mean, if, like, if we go from this result, the people telling us to move the question, we get hoping we should be okay. Because once we move the question, we really leave your mic on to announce that result, and he can start on everything else. And we already started taking up all the safety things, and the, the videos coming down. Um, I, the people with laptops probably have enough charge. Right. Can go. Okay, next one's great. Great. Okay. I have the results. This is on the amendment to Article 15, which would be a replacement. Yes votes 178, no votes 238. The amendment fails. The question comes to the uh, Article 15 as written. Ms. Fareed. County Fareed Hollis, I would like to call the question on Article 15. Second. <laughs> Okay, so amendment fails. By uh, Ms. Fareed and seconded by Ms. Roy. If you've done talking and want to just move on to voting as quickly as we can, please raise your card. Thank you. If you're opposed, raise your card. The motion passes. I see two people in line. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Um, hello, uh, it's me again, but this time I come with an actual prepared speech. Uh, uh, so I am Ariana Frankel. Uh, I'm on Rocky Pond Road in Hollis. Um, and I come to you as someone uh, who is um, on both sides uh, uh, of Jewish descent and um, someone who is also the president of the GSA here at the high school. Um, so I am here to discuss uh, the Article 15 warrant. Um, and I have read both the original uh, equity initiative um, from 2020 and the proposed amendments, and have found that both share the want for um, the continuation of equity um, for the students of Hollis and Brookline. Um, however, one topic is at the root of their disagreement with each other, and that is one of the debate of whether children should, uh, would be benefited or harmed by the discussion of our less than glamorous history as a country. Um, a common concern I've heard is that the discussion of systemic racism and the flaws of this country will divide and emotionally harm the students of Hollis Brookline. But I'm here as an example that these conditions are unwarranted. Um, I moved to Hollis in my eighth grade year, and since then, I have been um, uh, I have been so proud of what this school system has been doing to ensure the students get to know the good, the bad, and the ugly in our history and systems in this country. When the beginnings of the topics of systemic racism, equ equity, and the promotion of class diversion in our um, country was addressed by the amazing teachers here at Hollis Brookline High School and Middle School. I did not feel like I was being excluded, but instead like I was being included in a conversation of how to make this country better. 
if the concern is patriotism, I would ask, what about learning from our past mistakes is unpatriotic? If anything, learning of how our country is striving to be better has made me more patriotic than if I learned later in life, they hid those mistakes and past actions in shame. Time. Uh, I have a, one last paragraph. Um, quick, quick. Yeah. If the concern is distress, then look no farther than the amazing teachers, again, at this school, who have time and time again warned me and my fellow classmates of the nature of what we were discussing and invited us to set the pace and depth of discussion. Discrimination and, rec and racism have been handled so well by this school so far, but we are not done. If we stop teaching students about the past of this country and the echoes of it that still exist and affect us today, I worry that we as the next generation will not have the information to make this town and country better than it is. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Cordelia Scales, 49 Jew Paul Gould Road, Brookline, New Hampshire. I am fundamentally opposed to this article. I go to school in Washington, D.C. at GW. I have friends from Howard, which is a historically black college and university, and I have said things unintentionally that have offended them. And for that, I am deeply sorry. The reason why I have inadvertently said those things is I have not been taught the actual history that the people of that university and their backgrounds have experienced. I have not been taught about oppression of the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. I have not been taught about the oppression of Native Americans. So yes, this is something that needs to be taught in our schools because otherwise the future generations are going to go forward and only deepen the divide and this way that we can prevent anybody else from being offended or hurt or have that generational trauma brought up again and again and again. So please, I beg you, vote no on this article. Thank you. I need to verify the petitioners. Thomas Humphreys, stand up and show me your card. I don't see a Thomas Humphreys. Peter Walker. I see him. Doug Davidson. Doug, Doug, Doug. Ah, thank you. Eric Power. Sue Homawa. Yes. Marla Betches. Dennis Betches. Chris Adams. Chris Adams. I don't see five. I need five in order to, be, to, to have a ballot vote. I saw Peter Walker, Doug Davidson, Eric Power, and Sue Homola. Without five. Steve Wilson. All right. Write your name and sign it. Steve Wilson. We're going to do gray this time. The ballot boxes are open.